Lord's house today. Uh, this is week after Easter and uh, Resurrection Sunday. Praise God for those uh, that invited someone last week. Always a blessing to have uh, visitors for a Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And uh, we thank God for each and every one of you and uh, trusting God to work in our midst. By the way, Mother's Day is only a few weeks away. Amen. We got this Sunday, next Sunday, following Sunday, it will be Mother's Day. It will be here before you know it. Amen. So praise God. Welcome to our viewers that are viewing online, and we trust God will give us a good service today and our work in our midst and in our hearts. Pray for our missionaries. Got several missionary letters in uh, one uh, from the uh, New Orleans, and that came from the Crescent Baptist Church, Brother Givens and his family. And I'll give you a little update on him. Uh, Tico Agamelian down there with the humanitarian aid for the Ukrainians, and uh, also another one from Baffin Islands. We'll give you a brief update on those here in just a little bit. Amen. But we're going to sing our song of the month first of all. That is 187 in your hymn books. He is Lord. He is Lord. We're going to do all five stanzas. All five stanzas. He is Lord. And Terrell, you got me on. You do have me on. Amen. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead for he is Lord. And we can get that light. Thank you. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead for he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King. He is King. He has conquered every foe for he is King. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is King. sitting on his throne for he is God. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is God. He is life, he is life. He has vanquished death and hell for he That Jesus Christ is alive. He is all. He is all. All in all. All the power in heaven is his for he is all. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Sing that last stanza one more time. He is all, all in all, because he is all. Amen. Here we go. He is all, all in all. All the power in heaven is his, for he is all. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is all. Amen. If you believe he is all, say amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is all in all. Amen. That means he's got it all under control. Amen. 
and uh, he has everything at the, operating the way he planned for it to operate. As much as we, from a human standpoint, look at things and think it's out of control, God has it all in control. Amen. So we do praise God. Once again, welcome to our visitors online that are tuning in and our brethren that are tuning in online as well. And I thank God for each and every one of you for inviting someone last week and trust that God will continue to bring more folks in to get under the sound of the gospel as we invite them to come and hear the word of God and join us in worship. Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, asking his hand to be upon us. Let me say, first of all, thank you for praying for my wife, uh, Miss Dawson. She's feeling better week after week. She's got, uh, what, what, what week appointment is this this week? Six-week appointment this week. So thank you so very much for praying for her, for encouraging her to stay down. And uh, thank you for my precious children helping her do things when she's not allowed to do things. Amen. And thank God for them helping me when I don't want to do things. They do things for her. Amen. So they are jewels. Amen. So I uh, thank God for each and every one of them. But let's go ahead and join our hearts and bow our heads for prayer. Father, we do thank you once again for being all and all, all the power in heaven and earth is yours because you are all. Lord, we know one day every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, until that day, help us as your people to continue to do that. Help us continue to confess that you are Lord, you are all, and you are king, and Lord, you are life. And we thank you so much. As we witness uh, on a daily basis to the lost world around us, help them to see in us a reflection of Christ's likeness. Help us to be able to open our lips when we have the opportunity. Let them know the good news of Jesus Christ. Pray for our viewers online that you would open their hearts, open their minds as well. Lord, uh, restrain them from distractions that may be there, that may wholly and totally focus on the, the Word of God and the services of God today. And for us that are here in the audience, Lord, we pray that eyes would be opened, ears would be attentive, Lord, and hearts would be receptive to the Word of God because you are truly all in all. Thank you that you superintend in our life each and every day to alter it for the glory of God and may the day be no different. Speak to us in a miraculous way that we can say it's been good to be in thy house today. And Lord, I pray if there's a soul watching or a soul here in the audience that has not been saved, they will receive Christ Jesus before it's everlasting too late. It's all for him and by him. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, amen. All right. Well, just a couple things here. Uh, pray for the Crescent Baptist Church. That's Brother Gibbons down in New Orleans, amen, or as he likes to call it, Nolens, amen. Uh, the, um, the COVID has really hit them hard as well, and he sent a prayer letter saying pray for him. Uh, he has become bivocational. What that means is that uh, the church cannot support him as uh, they would uh, see fit, and so He's getting a job as well and working that way also. So pray for Brother Givens and his family. They have one, two, three, four, five precious children. And uh, he's asking for your prayers in his life. He said they're having visitors come in on a regular basis, and a couple have gotten saved. They're going to try to baptize them here in the near future. So pray for a Crescent Baptist Church, Brother Givens, Brent Givens, and his precious wife. Tico Agamalian sent an update as well. They're continuing with the aid for the Ukrainians, uh, both uh, in Ukraine and in Poland. And uh, he said, continue to pray that folks will continue to give and be receptive to the packages that they're giving them as well. And he said, from what they are giving, some people are astounded at the generosity of God's people and are being more receptive to the gospel in a needy time as it is there in the Ukraine. So continue to pray for them, number one, that their efforts don't get hindered by what the Russians are doing, but then at the same time that the hearts that they're touching will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ for it's everlasting too late, because that's what they really need. Millions have already fled from the country seeking uh, re refuge here in the United States and many other of the neighboring countries. Uh, so pray for their relocation, some of which may never get back to their home. Uh, you know, but, but again, we've got to look at it, uh, but God meant it unto good. That's what we're going to be preaching about today. It is God's purpose maybe to relocate them to other places. We look at it from our, our vantage point as a tragedy, but God may be meaning it for good, and I believe he ultimately will use it for good, even though the Russians mean it for evil. Amen. Then lastly, we've got the, um, the Hitz family. 
they finally did get back to Canada and they got back to a big surprise. They received their dual citizenship. They are Canadian citizens as well as American citizens, so they don't have to do all the visa going back and forth. Uh, their children were born there in Baffin Island for the most part, but they were waiting on that, and so they received uh, their citizenship, and uh, they're excited about that, so we praise God for them. Same thing there, they went back, had to go through the protocols of quarantine, this, that, and the other. Uh, but they're able to get back into the ministry, and uh, they're thanking each and every one of you for what the, you have done on furlough, amen, and, believe, and they did come by here around Christmas time. Uh, so they thank God for each one of you that received them and prayed for them and that visa and now the citizenship that they have. Pray also for the Griffin family in Las Vegas, and they had the same thing, uh, Brother Tony uh, Griffin has got to go out and get another job uh, to help support them with COVID has really hit them hard also. So pray for them down in Las Vegas for the Griffin family. Amen. Well, other than that, no, I don't have any uh, birthdays on the, the list right now. So we're trusting God to work in our midst. We are at 297, though. Keep walking with the Lord in your hymn books. 297. We're just going to do the second stanza. 297, Jesus wants to keep us in his care. Everywhere we go, he is always there. Second stanza. All right. If we follow Jesus, he will lead. He will then supply our every Absolute success is guaranteed Walking in the goodness of the Lord Keep walking with the Lord All the way Keep trusting in His Word Every day keep looking for the sun Watch and pray Keep walking, trusting all the way, looking, watching, praying every day. And the last song is going to be Trust His Word, Trust His Word 294. And I want you to listen to the words that you're singing. Trust His Word, the, uh, the message, but God meant it unto good, pretty much is coming from Joseph trusting the Word of God. Amen. Trusting in the Word of God. Trust His Word. That's on 294, if you want to use your hymn book, 294. All right, here we go. Jesus made a star in heaven. He created earth and sea. He's the keeper of all knowledge. What is past and what will be? Yet he offers his great wisdom, so you will not lose your way. Like a lamp that glows every step, it shows you can know. Trust His Word, trust His Word, all God's promises, all God's promises are true, trust His Word, when your pathway disappears, when your joy distant stranger. He is not a distant stranger. He can be 
your closest friend and he'll always listen closely when you share your heart with him jesus walked the path beside you he had been there all along and you guide your feet with your staff as weak and your strength is almost gone trust is worth trust is worth all god's promises are true trust is worth when your pathway disappears when your joy gives way to tears when your play when doubt and fears trust is Amen. What do you think the songwriter wants us to do with that song? Trust his word. Amen. Amen. Trust his word. That is a Ron Hamilton song, by the way. How many of y'all know Patch the Pirate? Amen. That is a Ron Hamilton song. Went home to be with the Lord a few years ago. Amen. Patch the Pirate, Ron Hamilton. Amen. Trust his word. Well, uh, that song goes hand in hand with what we're going to be talking about today. So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and get them ready at Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Genesis 50, verse 20. Mrs. Dawson and Faith and G2 are going to come up and sing for us. But Genesis 50 and verse number 20 as they come on up. Yeah. 
his life brings God is still doing great God is still doing great things His power has never changed Transform your life. God is still doing great things. Great things. I know He'll do it if you have a need. I know He's able. If you need great thing for yourself, if you need great thing to be made my God great is great still great is. Oh, yes, he is. yes, God is able, God is able to transform your life. that say amen god is still doing great things you know and um every day is a miracle think about it it was a day that wasn't promised it was a day that was not formed it's a day that you have not lived it's a day of god's grace once again each and every day is a gift of god and today is no different amen by the way let me uh preface this message by saying this is one of those messages that makes you kind of say, mm, I don't know about that preacher. Mm, I don't know about that preacher. Mm, I don't know about that preacher. This, this is one of those type of messages. Hey, man, what are you talking about? But God meant it unto good. Mm, I don't know about that preacher. Uh, Genesis chapter 50. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and stand. And uh, if you're able, and turn over to verse number 20. One verse we're going to read, Genesis chapter 50. Verse 20, if you're viewing online, you may be thinking the same thing. Yeah, I don't know, preacher. Yeah, I don't know, preacher. Uh, Three-part message today that I'm going to try to put into two parts. Uh, the introduction is a bit lengthy, but the message for today is uh, rather short. And then next week, uh, we'll try to pick it up and finish it off by God's grace. No guarantees. Amen. Uh, but with that, I would say this, but God meant it unto good. Amen. All right. Genesis chapter 50 and verse uh, 20. Um, you know, I'm going to read the starting in verse 17. Then I want you to chime in with me at verse 20 to set this up. How many are familiar with the life of Joseph and the story? I think most of us are. Amen. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail uh, with the story. But uh, let me read in verse 17 and then you join in at 20. So shall ye say unto Joseph, these are his uh, brethren talking, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. Tall order. Uh, for they did unto thee, what's the word? Evil. And now we pray thee, what? Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father, and Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Shows you the type of heart that Joseph had. 
and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Amen. Join with me in verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. The phrase that I want to stick in your minds today, and if you don't get anything else, is, but God meant it unto good. Say that with me again. But God meant it unto good. Say it again. But God meant it unto good. Say it one more time. But God meant it unto good. Oh, if we could get that, that down in our hearts. If we could just get that down in our hearts, we'd have a whole lot of peace in life. If we could just get those simple words, but God meant it unto good. Six simple words. Father, bless now the message today. Lord, this is one of those messages that makes you want to say, I, I don't know, Lord. I, I don't know, Lord. But God, it is still in the Bible. It is still true. It still happened. And Joseph still lived it. Lord, there are people in this congregation that are still living it today. There are people viewing online that are still view, living it today. There are people in the Ukraine that are still living this today. There are even God-fearing Christians in the Russia that are living this today. And Lord, they're trying to find uh, in their heart to say, but God uh, meant it unto good, and they seem to not be able to find that. And Lord, under the, the sound of my voice, there are those that are trying to find it to say, but God meant unto good, but it's so hard to find to say that. Well, I'm no fool, even in my own life. There's some certain, certain things. I just say, Lord, how did you mean that for good? But you did. Lord, in the sweet by and by, we'll see it all. Joseph was blessed enough to see it pan out before his eyes. He didn't see it all, but he saw quite a bit. God, help us to get the message today, and may it sink into our hearts. Lord, those that may not be saved, don't know Christ, they, they are thinking, how could God uh, mean this for good? Well, the first thing they need to know is that you want to save them because you love them and Christ died for them. Lord, help them to see that is the good that they need to see today. They need a Savior. But then for God-fearing people that have been washed in the blood of Christ, that have received Christ as Savior, help us to see the things past, the things present, will be used in the future for good. Lord, to use the message today, use me as your servant. Lord, I can't preach this message, but I need you to speak through me by the Holy Spirit's power and give the things that need to be said so that your will will be done. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Six words, but God meant it unto good. We find here at the end of Genesis just a few verses left to go. The, the brothers that did evil to Joseph are coming to ask forgiveness. And uh, Joseph is pleading with them, don't beat yourself up. You, you truly did mean evil. Yeah, yeah, you did. But God meant it unto good. And that good is to save your life and the life of many others. There are things in your life and things in my life that we don't quite understand. And those things are evil. People have done evil to us. We don't understand it. But God comes on record through Joseph and says, but God meant none of good. How could that possibly be? That's what we're going to talk about today. Today's message is entitled, How to Handle the Peaks and Pits Along Life's Pathway. How to handle the peaks and pits along life pathway or a recipe for peace and contentment. Yes, sir. A recipe for peace and contentment. Life's pathway is full of peaks and pits, both highs and lows. We're not always on the peaks of life. Neither are we always in the pits in life. A phrase that will give us peace on every pathway, whether peak 
or pit that we should meditate daily on is those six words, but God meant it unto good. Say, what, what, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. I believe Joseph really believed this promise, and he practiced it. Yes, he Say that again. I believe Joseph really believed this in promise and in practice, and I fear that sometimes we believe the promise in theory, but because it's just theory, we don't practice it. I believe Joseph had the recipe for peace and contentment in life, and it was those six words, but God meant it unto good. An introduction is going to be a, little, a bit lengthy, but I want to set something up here so that we can see what's going on in this life of Joseph on his peaks and pits in life. I believe that no matter what is in life on our pathway, God meant it unto good, period. You say, preacher, but. No, there's no buts. There's no buts. God can take a bad situation and turn it good. Somebody say amen. amen. As painful as that may be to us, I've got some painful situations in my life. I'll be the first one to tell you. I've got a lot of painful situations, but I know that God did it for good. I, I can't figure it all out. Amen. I don't know the end from the beginning. Right. But like Joseph, I know God meant it for good because God loves me and he loves you. I've got three children and things that happen in their lifetime. I try to protect them from anything bad, but certain things happen that are bad, but I'm going to try to take it and make it good. God does the same thing for us. But God meant it unto good. I believe that no matter what is in our life, on our pathway, God meant it for good. I believe that's what kept Joseph from complaining in the pits on his pathway. And I believe that will keep us from complaining in the pits on our pathway. I believe that's also what kept Paul from complaining in the pits on his pathway. You never find Paul complaining. You never find Joseph complaining, although both of them got dealt bad hands. Yes. Amen. Amen. Evil was done to both of them. Paul's version of but God meant unto good was Philippians 4.11. For I have learned... And whatsoever state I am, therewith to be what? Content. In other words, Paul is saying like Joseph, God meant it unto good. But God meant it unto good. Joseph and Paul are both saying no matter where God has me or what he does in his will, he means it for my good and the overall greater good of mankind. Amen. Amen. By the way, Get off yourself. Life is not about you. Right, Somebody say amen. amen. The problem is we get on ourselves. We get stuck on ourselves, and life is not about you. Life is about the overall God, uh, the overall goodness of God in the life of men, women, boys, and children. It's not about you. Does God love you? Yes, He does love you, and He will use you for His greater good sometimes, and allowing evil to be on your pathway and my pathway. Somebody say amen. amen. One of those messages we don't like to hear, but it's true. He means it for my good and the overall greater good. Pits and peaks, highs and lows. It may be bad, it may be sad, but God means it unto good. And by the way, that's the only way we continue in contentment and peace. Paul would put it another way in Romans 8, 28, and we know that how many things? So it's sitting on my desk, been there for a long time. Since the beginning of my ministry, and all things work together for good. Did he say everything was good? He said all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Notice this, not our purpose. His purpose, not our purpose. Amen. Dealing with Joseph, Paul, and us too, I want to show you a perplexing verse. Hold your finger there. Go over to Proverbs 16. I, I, I see this verse, and this verse perplexes me to no end. Proverbs 16. Perplexing verse of Scripture, 16 and verse number 4. By the way, 
God says this in verses 1, 2, and 3, the preparations of the heart and man, the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. I mean, you think you're doing right. But the Lord weigheth the spirits. Then he says in verse 3, commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. But then notice number 4. The Lord hath made how many things? All. all things for himself. What did Romans say? We know that how many things? All, all. things work together for good. The Lord hath made all things for himself. Notice this, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. God made all things for himself, even made the wicked for the day of evil. That bothers us, doesn't it? God made the wicked for the day of evil. In other words, he allows wicked people to be wicked, and he uses their evil. No, God is not evil, but he will not stop you from doing what you want to do. Somebody say amen. amen. Why do you think atrocities are committed? Why do you think rapes are, are, are committed? Why do you think murders are committed? Because God will not stop you from doing what you want to do. Amen. amen. The wicked he's made for the day of evil. That bothers me. Using someone more wicked than me to perfect me to help me. How dare you, God? Use someone more wicked than me to help me. Use someone better than me to help me. Oh, God says, no, sometimes you need someone more wicked than you to help you. Oh, amen. amen. That, that bothers us. God used the evil of Joseph's brothers to get him to Egypt for their good. Somebody say amen. He used the evil of these brothers to get Joseph to Egypt for their good. I can't figure that out. God used the evil then of Pharaoh to get Israel out of Egypt for their good. God, you use evil people? We think we got the market on God. Well, God just wants to use me. I'm washed in the blood. I'm all that in a bag of chips, Pastor White. He don't want to use you, you old wicked robber. He don't want to use you, you old rapist. He don't want to use you, you serial killer. He don't want to use you, you liar. He don't want to use you, you fornicator. God's got the market. He's going to use me. No, he uses the evil too. Amen, By the way, we're not supposed to be doing wicked, are we? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you tell it, Jeff. Yes, we're not supposed to be doing wicked, but he will use the evil and use their wicked. Hey. Bottom line, God can use evil people to fulfill his greater will in our lives for the greater good. And that's what we're talking about today. Hence, along life's pathway, we must meditate daily on, but God meant it unto good for peace and contentment. If you meditate on the evil that people are doing, you will never have peace. Never have peace. Because you're thinking about what they did, and you start thinking about how you can get revenge. That is not of God. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Did he get the brothers back? Yes. Did he get Pharaoh back? Yes. Did he get Paul's uh, 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 people that attacked him back? Yes. God is the one that gets that, not you. Peace and contentment comes said, God meant it unto good. David, uh, uh, Joseph believed that. But God meant it unto good. Family Bible Notes commentary says this, the object of God in allowing men to commit evil is very different from their object in committing it. Read that again. The object of God in allowing men to commit evil is very different from their object in committing it. In other words, they intend something else. God intends something totally different. He goes on to say, whenever men intentionally do evil, their intent is evil because they are evil and it is evil. But he says, <clears throat> God's design and allowing it is good for an ultimate good because he is good. So in other words, God can take the evil and turn it good. Amen. God can take the bad and turn it uh, glad. That's how good God is. But God meant it unto good if we could just get that thought down it would improve every day of your life and my life god meant it under good can be rephrased for joseph like this all that happened to joseph all this happened so i god 
or, or Joseph, I should say, all this happened so I, Joseph, could be greatly exalted in Egypt and be the means of saving my father, my brethren, and a multitude of others from sure death and illustrate to future generations the wonderful providence of a wonder-working God over all. What is this about? An overall good. An overall good. What is it about in your life? An overall good. You can't see what God's trying to do, but God sees. And God will orchestrate the events of your life, meaning each step unto good. Each step. Again, preacher, do you like it? Don't like it a bit? I don't like people doing evil to me. I don't like it. But God meant unto good. Yeah, he did. And sometimes I got a hard time believing that. And sometimes I got a hard time swallowing that. And I definitely have a hard time living it. I want to smack people. That's just, I'm just, I'm, I'm not spiritual as y'all. I just want to smack people sometimes and say, stop that. I want to trip them sometimes and say, that's what you get. That's, that's, that, that's human nature. That's sinful nature. No, y'all say, I would never want to do that. No, you, you worse. You probably want to do something worse. I just want to smack them around a little bit and say, you take that. I, I'm a child of the king. I, you can't treat me like that. Don't you know who I am? And they say, yeah, you're another sinner just like me. Oh, we can only look at life from the view that Joseph took. But God meant it unto good. Let me show you one more perplexing verse before we get into the message. Turn back to the book of Judges. One more verse, and this one again is perplexing, especially if you got children. If you got children, this is this is definitely one that you think, uh, uh-uh, uh, this, this this is not working. Judges chapter fourteen. How many of y'all know Samson? How many of y'all know Samson made some bad choices? And how many of y'all know that Samson's choices that he made, God meant it for good. Judges chapter fourteen. One of those perplexing verses like God using the wicked for the day of evil, chapter 14. And notice how it starts off. Of course, uh, Samson's going to be a judge in Israel. Verse 1, Samson went down to Timothy and saw a woman in Timothy, the daughters of the Philistines. Of course, the Philistines were sworn enemies. Mm -hmm. David killed Goliath, who was a Philistine. Sworn enemies. Verse 2, and he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I've seen a woman in Timothy, the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, what do you say? Get her for me to wife. I want to marry heathen. I want to marry an unsaved person. I want to marry somebody out of the will of God. Verse 3, then his father and his mother said unto him, which most godly parents would say, is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father and his prideful self, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. I want the unsaved. I want the uncircumcised. I want the woman out of God's will. She pleases me because my heart is uncircumcised. My heart is unsaved. My heart is this way. I'm a rebel. I think I can handle it all. Wow. This is a man who's supposed to be a Nazarite from the womb someone that was dedicated to the service of God, someone who's going to be a judge in Israel, the one that people look to to emulate his example. This is the man. But God, men are none good. Now, it doesn't say that, but notice what it does say, verse 4. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. You know what that said in, in layman's term? But God, men are none good. They knew it was not of the Lord that he sought an occasion, this is God, against the Philistines, for at the time, Philistines had dominion over Israel. So the decision of Samson that he made in his evil was not the choice that God would have made for Samson nor his parents, but God used the situation. Parents, sometimes our children are going to make decisions that we don't approve of, you just got to love him and say, let God be God. I've got a son getting ready to go to college. I am not going to be with him 24 hours a day. I cannot watch everything he sees on the Internet. I cannot watch everything that he texts. I cannot be in every class. I can't watch every girl that tries to hit on him. I can't watch it all. But God meant it 
unto good. Now he come home, I'll whoop him. No, I won't do that. <laughs> I love him, amen. Hey, sometimes it just got, does it ever say that a Samson's parents stopped loving him? Nope. Did it also say that they accepted the decision that he made? They had to. They had to. Did they approve of it? No. Did they, they, they tell him to his face? Yes. Yeah. Isn't there somebody else, son? Yeah. No, she pleases me. What am I saying? But God meant it unto good. Did it catch up with Samson in the long run? Yes, it yeah. did. Yes, it did. Why? That wasn't God's choice, but that was Samson's choice. And God said, I'm going to use that choice unto good, Samson. I'm going to use your fleshly, worldly desire of your heart, give it to you, and then use it for good. But you will pay for it in the end. Yes, sir. Did Samson pay for it in the end? Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. So two verses that we don't like. The one that says God uses the wicked and the evil sometimes for against us and then they knew not that it was of the lord by the way parents should we counsel and encourage the children don't stop don't stop should we tell them what's right don't stop don't stop but when they make the bad choice should we stop loving them don't stop keep loving them keep loving them. some of them will actually come to their senses amen like me amen. my parents told me about my drinking i i, I can handle drinking I, I can handle this. I'm three times seven. I'm married. I got a wife. I can handle this. Came crawling back to God. My parents said, we had been praying for you, son. Not only talking today, was blue in the face, brown in the face, whatever you want to say, amen. They knew not that it was of the Lord. It was not the Lord's choice, but God would use the choice for good. God meant it unto good. So, folks, as we look at this message today, you see Samson, God meant it for good. We see the evil, God uses that for good. Come back to Joseph. Come back to chapter 37, Genesis. Chapter 37. We pick up with Joseph back in chapter 37. Now, we read in verse number 50. And in verse number, uh, chapter 50, he's on the peak of life. Amen. Hey, but wait a minute. What goes up must come down. Yes, chapter 37, we find Joseph here in chapter 37. We're introduced to him. He's already on the peak of life, on his pathway. He was 17. He was trustworthy. He was favored above his brethren. He, life was good, amen. amen. G2, how old are you, 17? Anybody else here 17? Amen. How many of y'all been 17? Yeah. You know how it was when you were 17. You're almost grown, but not yet. You're not that little teenager, just 13. Man, you just think you know it all, got it all, got it all going on, amen. Uh, Joseph finds himself there. He's on the, the peak of life right now. He's at the top of his game. He was probably buff. He was probably strong. He was probably smart. He was all that. And then you throw on, he's got his dad in his back pocket. Hey, we've all had those days like Joseph, sun's shining, home's good, family's good, job's good, finances are good, birds are chirping, birds are singing, God seems to be smiling on you, things couldn't get better, you're on the peak of life, and then the day starts. And then the day starts, you go to work, you go to school, you see your neighbor, you see your in-laws, you see your cousins, you see your relatives, God forbid, you see your husband, you see your wife, you see your children, and they let you have it, and you were on that peak, and you come a-tumbling down faster than Jack and Jill. Hey, Amen. But when you woke up, boy, you had coffee, Woo, smell good. Go outside, oh, feel the sunlight, oh. God, this is so good. <laughs> and then the phone rings. And that peak turns into a ski slope. And you wonder how you got so low so fast. Open chapter 37. There's, there's Joseph. Notice what it says about Joseph in chapter 37. <clears throat> and again, we're not going to elaborate on most of this because most of us know this. Uh, but it says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Billah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Yeah. So, he, 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 you know, we, we would call that 
we would probably say he's being a tattletale. Yeah. We would say he's being a snitch. Yeah. That, that's what we would say. Yes, you, know what, you know what Joseph calls that? Just being honest with God, being honest with my father. That's right. that, that this is what they're doing. Did, did he seem to mean any ill by it? Doesn't seem to. Nope. But notice verse 3, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. We see Joseph's dress was different. The pathway to this pit begins after the peak of life. What goes up must come down. Keep in mind there's a balance along God's pathway of life. We're not always at the peak and we are not always in the pit. Joseph's dress was different. May I add, this was not Joseph's choice. This was God directed. You say, well, it was his father. Who do you think directed his father? This was a God-directed dress that was different. He had a prophetic coat, something in jo Jacob's old age he must have noticed about Joseph through his age and experience. By the way, do you know that the older people get the better judge of character they seem to be? They can spot mannerisms and they can spot things. I remember we used to be around uh, uh, some of my, my uh, aunts and uncles and uh, older folks like that, and they would watch somebody and say, if that boy don't change, this is how he's going to be. They say, if this girl don't change, this is how he's going to be. I saw one time one of my uh, relatives, they went out with somebody on the motorcycle and came back, and as soon as she got off the, the motorcycle, man, and the, grand, the aunt, aunt got the switch and started switching her. Wow. And we're thinking, oh, what was it all about? She knew the girl's character. And to go on the motorcycle and go off with the boy and come back, she knew the girl's character. And she said, if you don't change, this is not going to be good for you. By the way, as she grew up, guess what happened? Out of wedlock. She knew the girl's character. And she said, look, if you don't change, this is what's going to happen. The older you get, sometimes the better judge of character you are. Not always. Sometimes. So obviously there's something that Joseph had going on in his life that, that Jacob saw, and he gave him this coat of many colors, and it was no fault of, Jake, uh, of Joseph's that he had this. He had a prophetic coat. Number two, he had problems from his coat. Notice down there in verse number four. When his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Isn't that an honest reaction from siblings? You're going to favor this one over me? Now, granted, uh, did J Joseph have something different in his character? Evidently, he did. Was he going to be the savior of the family? Yes, he was. Possibly Jacob saw that, and he said, you know what? This is what you're going to be. This is how you're going to be. I'm going to treat you a little different. Now, is that fair to the others? No, it's not fair. But God meant it unto good. But God meant it unto good. Now, it matters not how the brothers took it. What matters is that God meant it unto good. That's what matters. And by the way, it matters not how you take things and what you do with things. What matters is that God meant it unto good. You may get sour and be an old, uh, what they call them, a, a sour persimmon, but God is still meant to good. That's your bad heart, not God's. Amen. Hey, he had a prophetic coat, verse 3. He had problems from his coat in verse, 30, uh, in verse number 4. They hated him uh, even uh, uh, when he was hated at no fault of his own. Amen. There were no complaints for Joseph. Do you read anywhere in verse 4 where he said, well, don't hate me. I didn't do that. It's not my fault that dad likes me and gave me his coat. Do you see him complaining? No. He just took it. It was no fault of his own that he had a prophetic coat. It was no fault of his own that he got problems from his coat. But God meant it good. No complaints for Joseph. But then, uh, number two, Joseph's dress was different. Number three, number two, his dreams were different. Notice down in verse number five. Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. So his dress was already different. He had a prophetic coat, got problems from his coat. His dreams were different. He had promising dreams there, uh, and he had problems from his dreams. They hated him yet the more. Are there complaints from Joseph at this point? No. no. 
Why? God meant it uh, uh, for good. I believe Joseph believed that with all his heart, that even though I've got this prophetic coat and uh, I, I, I got problems from this coat, even though I've got these prophetic dreams, I'm getting problems from these dreams, I believe God means this for good somehow, some way, some shape, some fashion, some form. I can't figure it all out, but I know God means it for good. Amen. I know he does. Friend, if we could ever get to that point every day of our life, if we could ever get there, people, are people going to hate you? Yeah, they are. Are people going to do you wrong and it's not your fault? Yeah, they are. And you can, you can form all kinds of plans, what you're going to do and how you're going to bat them or whatever. But God means it for good. See, the problem, his dress was different. His dreams were different, had problems from that. Come down to verse number eight. He saw his brothers bowing down to him. They hated him yet the more for that. Notice verse number eight. His brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Shall thou indeed have dominion over us? Because he had told them the dream and of them bowing down to him in the, the dream. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. So he saw his brothers bowing down to him. They hated him yet the more. Then you come down to verse number nine. His parents are bowing down to him. He elaborates in the dream a little bit more. He dreamed yet another dream. He told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed the dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon, 11 stars made obeisance to me. Come down to verse number 11. Notice what he says down there. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. So he had problems from his dreams. He had promises from his dreams. He saw the brothers bowing down to him. He saw his parents bowing down to him. He still doesn't know what it means, but even though they envied him, they hated him, God admitted unto good, and he never complained. I'm talking about peace. You want peace? You want contentment? Don't complain about what God has you going through because he means it for good. He can make it good even though it's bad. By the way, you and I are going to have our share of bad. Amen. Because there are enough bad people going around. Amen. Sometimes they're within our own home. Sometimes they're without our home. Sometimes they're at our jobs. Sometimes they're at our schools. Sometimes they're in our sports teams. Sometimes they're in the community. Sometimes they're in the clubs that you go to uh, for whatever you go to. Amen. They are there. Not everybody likes you. Not everybody means good towards you, and God can take that evil and turn it unto good. His dress was different. His dreams were different. But then his duties were different. Come down to verse 13. Verse 13, Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock and check them. Show you a change here. Notice verse number 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was where? Feeding the flock with his brethren. Where's he at in 13? Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem. Where's Jacob at? Or Joseph at? He at home. You know what they might have said? Leave that dreamer home. Leave that sharp dresser at home. Leave that, that drudge weight at home. We don't want him out here with us. Every time we're out here, he's going to tell on us. He's going to do this. and Just stay at home. It could be that, or it could be. His dad said, you know what? I think your brother's got it out for you. You need to stay at home so you don't get beat up. Amen. I got something for you to do at home. Why don't you take care around the house? Why don't you, uh, you know, mop the floor or uh, mop the tent or whatever? You know, do, do something. Take out the trash. Amen. Now, stay, stay, I keep my eye on you because I gave you a prophetic coat. Something's different about you. You've got these dreams. Something different about you. Let me give you some different duties. Because you go out there, they're going to probably punch you in the eye. Whatever the case is, maybe the brothers didn't want him out there, or maybe the father wanted him back home to keep an eye on him. The fact remains, he was out there in verse number 2. You come to verse 13, he's not out there anymore. What am I saying? His duties were different. He's being sheltered now while his brothers are out shepherding. Come down to verse 14. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, to see whether it be well with thy brethren and with flocks. Bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. So what do we find here? He went to his brothers, even though he know, he knows they despise him. Even though they envy him. Even though they hate him. Do you see him saying, no, dad, please don't let me go to my brothers. They hate me. They envy me. Uh, they despise me. I, I, I think they're going to have it out for me. I, I think they're going to hurt me. They're going to kill me. They're going to do this. They don't like my coat of many colors. What if they do this? You don't find him complaining one bit, do you? What did he do? He obeyed his father. 
Why? God meant it on the good. Even though they hate him, even though they envy him, even though they despise him, even though his prophetic coat is on him, the, the dreams are on him, his duties are different. He's at home because God meant it unto good. Notice verse 18. When they saw him, him who went to them, even though he knows they hate him, even afar off, before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. You would think that's what Joseph is afraid of, but he went anyway. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. And you know the rest of the story. Joseph's dress was different in verse 3. His dreams were different in verse 5. His duties were different in verses 13 and 14. And because his destiny was different in verse 23. God had a different plan for him. All of the, the, the dress, different. The dreams, different. The duties, different. It was because it was a different destiny. Joseph was different in every way, and his destiny uh, was different too. Everyone else would remain in Canaan land, but he would go into a pit to go to Egypt. Why? God meant it under good. You may be in the pit of life right now. You had a peak yesterday. You had a peak last week. You had a peak two weeks ago. You had a peak three weeks ago, and now you find yourself in a pit. God will not leave us in the pit. We're just looking at right now. He started off on a peak. Life was good. Things were good. I had it going on. I was happy. I had no problems. But then I got this dress different. Then I've got these dreams that were different. And I believe God meant something good from it. Can't figure it out. My duties got changed. I'm no longer shepherding in the field with my brothers. I seem to be sheltered at home with my dad. And then I go out here and I'm in a pit because my destiny is different. I can't figure it out. Can't figure it out. But he had one thing going for him. He believed God meant it unto good. God meant it unto good. You never find Joseph complaining all the way through this passage. Notice 23. Came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him in a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it you know they could have put him in a pit with water so he could drown but God meant it under good they could have put him in a pit with a bunch of snakes but God meant it under good they could have put him in a whole lot of other pits with some wild boars or some wild animals or something like that but God meant it unto good what am I saying he started in the peak he went down to the pit but God meant it unto good. I don't know what's going on in your life. You may be in the pit right now. You may be on the peak right now, but sooner or later, the pit's going to go to the peak and the peak is going to go to the pit. One or the other, you're either on the, the decline or on the incline. You're going down towards the pit or you're coming up out of the pit because there's a balance with God. Yes, he uses evil men sometimes. Yes, he means things for good that you don't understand the choices that you're making. But God can take a bad situation and make it good. He did it for Joseph. He did it for Paul. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for me. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. He'll do it. His coat was taken. No complaints for Joseph. His freedom was taken. In verse 24, no complaints for Joseph. Remember, the story started back in chapter 37. We yeah. saw Joseph already on the peak of life on his pathway. The pathway of life began going down towards the pit. But because of Joseph's God-given dress, his God-given dreams, his God-given duties, and his God-given destiny, none of it was his fault. He asked for none of it. He didn't ask for the coat. He didn't ask for the dress. He didn't ask for the duties. He didn't ask for the destiny. Yet he got it. Why? God meant it unto good. For who's good? The good of his family. The main ones who did the evil. The main ones who did the evil, he was going to save. And that's why he could say what he said in chapter 50 and verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. Bring the past as it is this day to save much people alive. Next week, we're going to take Joseph from the pit and go up the peak. He started on the peak. 
went down to the pit. Next week, we'll pick him up out of the pit, watch him go to the peak. All throughout it, God is good. Let me read you a phrase uh, from Warren Wearsby. This caught my eye, my ear. He said this, when people sin, notice the word, repeatedly, giving up on them is easy. But we must forgive them, and notice this, trusting God to work in their lives. We must be stepping stones and not stumbling blocks. Read that again. When people sin repeatedly, giving up on them is easy, and yes, it is. You can attest to it, I can. You sin against me, I'm through with you. You sin against me twice, I might beat you. You sin against me three, four times, you ain't no telling what I might do to you. Hey, that's not God's way. When people sin repeatedly, giving up on them is easy, but we must forgive them and trust God to work in their lives. We must be stepping stones and not stumbling blocks. In my life, I have been forgiven so many times. I told you when I came to Christ, I had a lot of people to go to and ask for forgiveness. That I had wronged the years that I had known them. I was 26 years old when I got saved. No, 27 years old when I got saved. Amen. And I had 27 years of sins that I had to go and ask people to forgive me. It was nothing compared to the sins that God forgave me of. Amen. And guess what? As God forgave me, guess what? I forgave others, even the ones that didn't come to me and ask for forgiveness. Hey, I went to some people and said, will you forgive me? They forgave me. But then there were some people that should have come to me and asked for forgiveness, and they didn't come to me because guess what? I forgave them anyway. Why? God meant none to good. God meant none the good. Hey, folks, I got saved because a lot of people did me wrong. And I wanted to know somebody that wouldn't let me down. Yes, I had my wife. Yes, I had my parents. But I wanted something higher than them that wouldn't let me down, that would cover all of my sins that I had done. And I found Jesus. Joseph is a type of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. He never complained. He was wronged by his brethren. They tried to leave him for dead, but God meant it unto good. I don't know what's going on in your life, but God does. For years, the brethren didn't know what was going on in Joseph's life. They thought he was dead. But guess what? He was much alive. And all along, when he had those dreams when he had that coat. He had those different duties and he had that different destiny in Egypt. He was wondering about his family. And God bought him one day. After he had come out of that pit. Oh, he still wasn't on the peak yet. It wasn't on the peak until he got his family back. That's when he was on the peak. So whatever God is taking you through right now, let God be God, but God meant it unto good. Live with that thought in your mind, and you'll have peace and contentment. Any other way, you're going to struggle. Talk to God. Say, God, I struggle. I have to talk to him all the time. Lord, I struggle. I, got a, I had a plan. I was telling my wife I had this plan I had concocted, <laughs> and then God changed the plan, and I said, go God, what are you doing? I said, I got to listen to my own preach. God meant none the good. God meant none the good. I said, but Lord, how is, how is, how, how is this going to work for good? I just got to trust God. This message hit me right, right there. God, what are you doing? God meant it unto good. I'm looking to see what the good is going to be come out of it. <laughs> Amen. Because I sure can't see it right now. But I believe God can take it and mean it unto good. Heads bowed. Father, thank you. For Joseph, thank you for his life. Thank you what you've done. And Lord, it is true. This is a testimony that we can see. Uh, there were bad things that happened to Joseph throughout, but you meant it for good each and every step of the way. God, help us to see the good that you mean in our lives. Help us to understand 
that you have a greater, greater plan than we could ever think of. Lord, even though none of this was Joseph's fault, he was done evil. But you meant it unto good. Help us to see our own lives. And when things aren't our fault, help us to see how you mean it for good. We're not going to be able to fathom every ounce of it. But God, help us to trust you in it. If there's one today without Jesus Christ, maybe you're trying to bring them to be saved to trust Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. People have done them evil, and they're looking for help. They're looking for love. Lord, help them to see that, God, you so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son. Help them to see that they must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And they must be saved today. They will know the true peace and the true contentment that passes all understanding. And as God's people, Lord, help us to see every day we've got to meditate on, but God meant it unto good. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Minister now this time of invitation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take your hymn books. We're going to sing uh, one stanza of Trust His Word. It's back on 294. 294. We're going to sing that first stanza. Trust His Word. God has spoken He's got you maybe on the pit, in the pit. Maybe you're on the peak and maybe about to slide down. Maybe you're in between. The songwriter says, Jesus made each star in heaven. He created earth and sea. He's the keeper of all knowledge, what is past and what will be. Yet he offers his great wisdom so you will not lose your way. Like a lamp it glows, every step it shows, you can know his will each day. Play that for me, G. 294. First stanza. Jesus made a star in heaven. He created earth and sea. He's the keeper of all knowledge. What is past and what will be? Yet he offers his great wisdom. So you will not lose your way Like a lamp, it glows every step It shows you can know His will each day Trust His Word Trust His Word eyes are closed just for a moment as G2 sings through that second stanza you do business with God talk to the Lord tell him what you're going through maybe you're at that peak maybe at that pit but talk to him trust his word he is not a distant stranger they preach it but you don't know I don't he know can be your closest but it's, it's rough friend. didn't say it was easy and he'll I don't think Joseph had an easy time closely, with his brothers being against him. No heart I don't think he had uh, a good time when he was envied and hated Jesus because of the prophecy and dreams or a prophetic coat. I don't think he had a good time when his he duties were changed. He couldn't do what he used to do because of their envy and their hatred. And I don't think he had a good time in his destiny going to Egypt when everyone else was back in Jerusalem. And your strength is almost gone. But Joseph trusted God's word. He said, you meant it unto Trust evil. His word. But God meant it unto good. Trust, Trust his, his word. word. All God's promises are true. 
Oh, I'm David Lisset. Why don't you come and let us take a Bible and show you how you can be born again. Leave the comfort of your seats. Say, preacher, I'd like to be saved today. We'd love to have help you out. If you're a man, we're going to man to show you. If you're a woman, we're going to woman to show you. It's a thing to say. Christian, what is it you need to forgive? What is it you need to give up on? Who is it you need to continue carrying on with? What do you need to stop? Maybe it's complaining. Maybe be a little bit more content. Jesus made what is it? Star in heaven. The only he thing that's going to keep us sane earth and, sea. and at peace and content. He's the keeper but God. of all Men, let me go. knowledge. What keep our heads above water. And what keep us from lashing out at others. Keep us at peace with God. Keep us at peace with ourselves. Great wisdom. No complaints from so Joseph. All the way through. None of it was his fault. Like a lamb. He believed, but God knows every step. It Men shows you can know his will each day. Hum that chorus with me. Trust his word. Trust his word. All God's promises are true. Trust his word. Sing it if you know the words. When your pathway disappears, when your joy gives way to tears, when your plague with doubts and fears, trust his word. Father, we pray that you would work in us that trust in your word. We look at the example of Joseph, and God, we are praising you that we did not have to live that. But Lord, some of us have lived worse things than that. Some of us have not lived as bad, but it's bad for us. So, Lord, help us to see what good you're trying to bring. And when we can't see the good, help us to just trust your word. Help us to be content. And God, give us that peace that passes all understanding. When our pathway does disappear and when our joy gives way to tears, and Lord, we're plagued with doubts and fears. Help us just to trust your word. Lord, help us eventually, like Joseph, to see but God meant it unto good. Help us to be able to see the end of our toils. We'll not see every last one. But Lord, help us to see some of the things that you meant for good that others thought was so evil towards us. Love us, Lord. Forgive us where we're wrong. Encourage us where we need strength. Give us the peace that passes all understanding. And when we lose it, when we lose that contentment. Help us to look back to you, who is all, all in all, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless the remainder of our day. Bless our viewers online and those within the congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. I apologize. We went a little bit longer. Next week uh, is easy. We're going uphill. Say uphill is not easy. When good things are happening, it's good to go uphill. Amen. Uh, so we'll be going uphill next week. Joseph will be out of the pit and going up to the palace. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I like coming out of the pit and going to the palace. Amen. Uh, good things are waiting for me up there. So we'll finish that next week by God's grace. And uh, Lord willing, we should not be that long and uh, we'll see how god blesses but the week after that is mother's day don't forget mother's day amen uh, so we look forward to seeing what's going to happen start inviting people out now for mother's day say if you don't have a place to worship come to shining light for mother's day amen pray for pastor white because right after mother's day we're going to be taking g2 to college or not to college amen heavens no not that amen y'all be praying for me if we're doing that already amen i'll be taking g2 back to his graduation in pensacola visiting my family so we'll be gone for about uh four four or five sundays i think four i haven't looked at it yet but probably about four or five sundays pray for pastor white and mrs white and our absence will be taking over and looking forward to seeing what god's gonna lay on his heart amen preacher come on forward Share with us the closing and what God has uh, for us to do before we leave. Amen. Amen. Trusting his word.
Thank you, preacher. Oh, God. Sometimes you don't know. God knows what you need to hear. I apologize. God is so good. I'm sitting there just trying to hold back. I can't. And I'm not going to. Y'all pray for me, please. I just thank God for being God. He knows what he's doing. Our pathway. The things that we go through in life. God knows what we need to hear. I'm thankful so good that God is good. He's in control. He knows what he's doing. And a lot of evil and a lot of things that happen in life that we don't always understand why God does what he does. But I'm so thankful that he's in control. Praise the Lord this morning for the message. I'm thankful. I want to say this this morning. I was sitting there last night just following in some thoughts, and I was thinking about the things that I've talked to Pastor about. And you know what? I don't want to be right, but I always want to do what's right. Because they can mean it for evil, but God means it for good. Thank you, Pastor, for the message. Thank God for the messenger and the message this morning. Uh, as we close, remember to keep continue to pray for God to use us this week to be a beacon of light, to shine a lost and dark world. Uh, those around us need to see Christ in us, the hope of glory. If you haven't already this morning, uh, as you depart and leave here this morning, that you would uh, uh, give your tithes and offerings. There's a tray in the back. There's one here in the front. Just be in prayer for those that are not here this morning and those that need us to continue to lift them up in prayer, asking God to work. And the message would not fall on deaf ears this morning. I don't know about you, but I needed to hear what I heard this morning. And you may not hear what I heard, but I heard what God had to say to me this morning. So thankful that he knows what we need to hear and trust his word. Amen? Amen. He's a trustworthy God. Let's bow in prayer and ask God to bless as we're dismissed this morning. Father, thank you again for your blessings, God. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for your word, Lord, that we can trust in your word, no matter what's going on in life. And sometimes it brings us to a point where uh, we just need to hear from you. And this morning, I know in my heart of hearts, I heard from you. I'm so thankful for it. Thank you that you love me so much that you sent your son to die on the cross for my sin and not just mine, but for those that are here the message this morning as well and those that may hear it in the future, that you would change lives because of who you are. Bless those that are listening online as well, and Lord, maybe even the decisions that were made from what they heard this morning, and those that are under the sound of the preaching and teaching here in the presence of the message would uh, you work in their hearts as well. Thank you for speaking in my heart this morning, Lord. Pray you bless us now as we depart. Uh, bring us back at the appointed time, and I pray that you would continue to use us uh, in the day to come and continue to work in our midst throughout this week. We love you and we praise you. Thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing. We ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen.